Today I'm going to be surviving 100 days in Minecraft Hardcore, except instead of on Java, I'm going to be surviving on Bedrock Edition. Using a resource pack to make this possible, link is in the description, and my three main goals for these 100 days are to kill the Ender Dragon, get an Elytra, and kill the Wither. And remember, no matter how much time happens to be invested into your world, if you die in the game, you die for real. And that is it. If you die with this resource pack enabled, it permanently sets your game to adventure mode and prompts you to delete the world. I spawned in the world on day one and saw a broken nether portal before I even punched a tree. The loot inside was alright, but really I was just thankful for anything I could get at this point. The fire starter proved to be a really useful tool. And these guys here, they didn't even feel a thing. No! I then made a wooden pick and a wooden axe that shall be treasured until the end of this world. And after crafting some stone tools, I spotted another broken nether portal. Searching the chest, there was a bunch of obsidian and a gold sword with looting too. That is huge at this point in the game. This portal also happened to be next to a village, so it really must be my lucky day. Next, I crafted a hoe and a shield and got to work on robbing and confining the entire community. And at the end of the night, I mined all the way down to Y equals 11 to try and find some resources. Diamonds would be cool, but at this point I just really need some armor. After watching the furnace burn some of the day away, I got everything but the helmet early on day two and began swim mining. I also found my first diamonds. Uh, it was only three, but uh, you know, I'll take what I can get. At what I'm assuming is the morning of day three, I dug my way into an abandoned mine shaft, which is awesome because it's the only current place to get glow berries. I found a total of seven more diamonds, found a few bait chests, and even a wandering trader and his llamas way underground, but no glow berries. Crafted my first diamond pickaxe on day four, laddered out of the caverns, did a bit of farming, which led to a bit of breeding, then set up my clutter catcher outside of my future village. That night I broke into a man's home and slept in his bed while he stood there the entire night. And if you're wondering, I slept great. Day five began with violence and breeding, so you know it's gonna be a great day. I made my iron hat that I totally didn't forget about until now and headed out towards spawn for a jungle that I spotted. And you know I nabbed those gold blocks after getting iron tools. I also needed some leather on this trip. You know what drops that? I also hit up the dark oak forest, because I really like the wood and it's on the way to the jungle. Next I crafted a wooden shovel, and if you're asking why, you obviously don't play on bedrock. Spotting an amethyst in the ocean, so I grabbed one of the clusters. Then I spent the rest of the night fighting mobs and chopping logs. The morning of day six, I got in a little bit of a scrap, but that's okay, because as you heard before, violence makes the day great. I gathered up some melons and started the long journey home, and it was all going smooth until I jumped down a 55 block deep ravine. I landed in water and I was fine, but I was scarred for life and needed a new pair of pants. And let me tell you, getting out of that ravine took a considerable amount of effort. Returned home and some breeding always helps me feel better. Then it's on to senseless violence all night long, and I even got an enderpearl. I guess I kinda lied, I didn't do that all night. I did make some bone meal with the bones and get some sugarcane, cause you can bone meal sugarcane in bedrock. Day 7 began with killing a drifter, then moved on to home construction for the entire day. And I mean it, I built until I ran out of andesite walls, so I grabbed up some andesite in the middle of the night. And of course you know I'm staying top of all that breeding. And day 8, would you look at that, we are doing more breeding. But I brought my looting sword to satisfy my hunger and need for daily violence. Well, you're all now officially orphans, but your parents provided me with some good beef and some fine leather. And when combined with my premium horse leather, we now have 50 pieces of leather. Then I took some sand from next to my new construction, filled the hole in with gravel, and rubbed some dirt on it. Then I ignored it for the rest of the 100 days and kept on building for the rest of this one. I was getting attacked by phantoms, so I placed a boat for some reason and then slept through the night. Get out of your bed, chump. On day 9, I'm installing windows and making iron doors because I plan to have captives that are too dumb to operate a button. I spent the night hours by slightly expanding the village farm and building peacefully through the night with the absence of phantoms. 
Now we're in the double digit days and I'm rubbing both of my brain cells together hard here to try and come up with a spiral staircase design. Well, I don't know what happened here, but I failed to wrap the slabs around the log, so I chopped it all out, got in my boat, and headed all the way back to the world spawn because I lost all of my dark oak saplings being an idiot. I didn't mind though because I needed more glass and this is my closest abundant supply of sand because I have yet to find a desert. And now thanks to the magic of editing and the power of bone meal, I am chopping dark oak trees on my own property. I hung up a pillager captain flag and one of the first diamonds I acquired, made a spyglass for some weird reason. Then I acquired another flag, quickly drank the white stuff so I didn't trigger a raid on my village, then I collected and hung up my matching banner. And when I went to go and craft, I was totally griefed by a creeper. He didn't do any damage to me, but oh my god, this hurt my soul on a deep level. I could have easily spent a hundred days cleaning up this mess the right way, but I just cleaned it the same way you clean your room and shoved all of this crap in the closet. And thanks to that strat, I now had plenty of time to remove the ugly dirt floor inside of my house. I killed a creeper in my sugar cane the next morning because no day is right unless it starts off with violence. The rest of my day consisted of flooring with this lovely dark oak and jungle planks design, sealing off a spot for my initial breeding chamber, and moving two villagers until nightfall. I think this is the first time that I slept in my own bed for the night that I stole. Day 12, I'm on to stalking sheep for their wool. And yes, I did follow them around and wait for them to eat. The reason? Just like Oprah, these villagers require an 800 thread count minimum and a farm to table meal before they'll even consider getting down. But after a minimal amount of effort, a child was born. And since this land is under my dictatorship, I choose the professions. So they shall all be Fletchers to trade me emeralds for sticks. Then I spent the rest of the night building up on my house and trying to practice an MLG with a water bucket. Day 13 was spent constructing the walls of the upper level of my house. And the night was spent constructing the frame of the roof. It's kind of crazy how little you can get done in one full Minecraft day. But at the beginning of day 14, that's how we were looking, and I am loving the look of it. I can't wait till it's all filled in, but my ambitions are high. And in order to actually hit those stars I'm shooting for, I'll need some things set up in this world. And the first is a full enchanting setup, which I placed in on the top floor of my house. Getting the villager out of their glass box was made easy with a boat, because in order to make use of a level 30 enchanting table, I actually need to be level 30. So you know what that means, we are chopping logs and slinging sticks to villagers. Day 15, the breeding commences. Followed by horrible, fiery death. I am so sorry that you guys had to see that. But just remember, you're next. Then I needed to move out a couple more Fletchers and ran into a little bit of issues. But it was obviously nothing I couldn't handle and started selling my huge amounts of wood to the villagers. But of course, I mean, nothing goes smoothly forever. Why did they even come up here? Oh, and of course, you had to come out of here. But this was happening a lot, so I just needed to seal these guys in at the night time while they were sleeping. Day 16, I am chopping down jungle trees, and you know what that means. I'm going for insane profits in the stick department. But in life, you can never have enough money. I mean, I mean family. So we're making more babies. And the babies will be used to make me more money, just like these trees that we're replanting. Then with my newfound power and 30 levels, I decided to take a risk and do an enchantment, and we got a perfect silky boy on our hands. Next, it was time for me to try out one of these armorers. So I got one of those guys, and while trying to trade with them, I accidentally spent all of my money on pants. I was just kind of confused for a second, but, uh... Oh well, at least I'm totally stacked out and set with iron pants for the rest of my life. What exactly does it look like I'm doing on day 17? Because that's exactly what I did all day, and then replanted at night and sold all of my surplus of wood to the dumb Fletchers. And I needed to reach level 30 so that I could get a Fortune 3 pickaxe, and I was shocked that I just straight up got it there, so I crafted a diamond pick and enchanted that thing. It didn't have unbreaking, but you know what? I broke that baby in for itself. Doing a little bit of farming and breeding on day 18, and I'm always kind of chopping wood in the background, but then there was excitement in the form of a feather falling four book. Day 19's a good day for a couple more blast furnaces, because I don't need more armorers yet, but I do need a quick way to smelt down all these stonks. 
Then I moved on to slinging more sticks, buying chest plates off of armors, pickaxes off of toolsmiths in an effort to level them both up. I was even feeling so rich by the end of the night that I did a level 30 enchantment on an iron axe. I only got efficiency 3, but that thing helped me cut logs like I've never cut them before. This is going to make me quite a lot of money, so I am going to use that in a wise way and craft up a lectern, because now, on day 20, I am going to get a mending villager. Except I tried really hard all day and night, but I did not end up getting one. Day 21, I'm actually capturing a sheep in a pen instead of following it around for its linen. And then I got it a partner and bred them. But I spent the wheat to grow him into a man, because otherwise he will just eat all the grass in the pen. And you can't shear a baby. And for a while now, I've been failing to get a librarian to connect to a lectern properly in my house. And here is the reason why. But we can fix this together, so it's okay to follow along at home. Get a water bucket and place it in his face. Then cover his head with a block, and listen. And just like that, he was never here. And now the only way to increase my earning potential is to have more babies, which is probably the most counterintuitive thing I've ever said in my life. Day 22, I'm still at it trying to get that stinking mending villager. But would you look at it in the middle of the night, I ended up actually getting it. But I was in such a rhythm that I almost chopped it out anyways. But I locked in his trade and then I spent the rest of the night farming up logs. Day 23, I was planting my main cash crop and then humanely disposing of an iron golem in my sheep when he hit me and put me in critical condition. And since this is bedrock edition, it'll take me probably the rest of the day to heal. Day 24, I added mending to my silk touch pick and my fortune pickaxe, and then headed off to a caving adventure far away from my home. Then I spent the rest of the night in the caves getting iron and copper. Day 25, I'm still in the caves, and I dug my way into possibly the very biggest clump of diamonds I've ever seen in my life. There was in total 12 diamond ore all touching together right there, and at the end of mining all of it, I had a total of 23 diamonds, which is statistically adequate. Continuing through the mineshaft, I finally found glowberries, and I was super stoked about it. Then I easily conquered a zombie spawner with a single zombie. Searching in the chests, I got a ton of gunpowder and a saddle, which I had been looking for for forever. Then to finish out my day with a stroke of luck, I mined my way straight into a minecart chest containing a god apple. This is the very first enchanted apple I have ever found in my life, and we shall cherish it forever. Day 26, I surfaced and was heading home when I saw an axolotl mauling a glow squid. When I nodded in approval, he came out and danced, so I ditched the pink one I had for him. Then I figured it was about time I get a trusty steed, so I hopped on the first one, which was a black one. I would have liked to have him, but he was a little bit picky. The second one I hopped on loved me instantly, and that is what I like, the path of least resistance, just like electricity. And from this day forth, this extremely quick horse was named Least Resistance. I tied up LR back at my house, right next to the sheep, and he can get acquainted with them. Then I did some farming, some breeding, and some chopping all night long. Day 27, I was heading back home after a long night of chopping whenever I saw some horrible things happening inside of my house. I needed to save as many as I could, so I took my Smite 4 axe to them. Oh, it was horrible. The carnage was severe. There was definitely a lot of casualties, and I just hoped that my mending villager would make it out alive. I'm probably gonna have to build a monument dedicated to this day at some point, but right now, I was just concerned about my mending villager. And after checking through all of my librarians, I realized that I had axe murdered my mending librarian. The rest of my day was spent selling off my wood surplus, torch spamming on the inside of my build, and fighting off mobs the rest of the night. Day 28 was spent crafting a diamond sword and spending some levels on a looting 3 enchantment. I got looting 3 and sharpness 4, but I am okay with that. Then the rest of my day was spent doing some deforestation, smelting down my copper, and tilling out a whole new wheat field with my stone hoe that I bought. Day 29, can you guess what I'm here doing? Yeah, I'm trying to get that mending guy back. Did most of the daylight hours doing this, and then installed some of my copper roof at nighttime. My ambitions are very high to have this thing solid copper. 
Day 30, I put mending on my silk touch axe and named it Cleaver. Then I planted some bamboo shoots and hit up some shallow caves for coal and copper. When I returned home, I was being pestered by phantoms, so I slept through the night. Day 31, I raided the shallow caves for coal and iron for trading and copper for my roof. My daylight hours were spent in the caves, but at night, I'm getting paid. And at the same time, I'm leveling up some armorers and toolsmiths for some awesome trades. I can even get diamond stuff from these guys. And tonight was the night that I finally got a good pair of shoes. And don't worry, I'm also dumping all those cheapos that I bought finally. The next day, I'm under reforestation and deforestation, and it's all so I can rake in more and more money. I know that I can make more money by infecting and curing my villagers, but at this moment, I'm still kind of tender about the recent incident that occurred. And at nighttime, I saw a skeleton and a creeper, and I used that opportunity to get myself my first record, and another treasure to add to our collection. Day 33 started out with some peaceful farming that almost got real unpeaceful real fast when a creeper showed up. It was alright though, because I'm ultra powerful, so I took him out in one hit. And at this point, I'm starting to unlock some OP items from these villagers. And that night, I went out to go and grab some coal from the nearby mountains so I could sell it back to these villagers. Day 34, I maxed out an armor that'll now sell me a pretty dope diamond helmet. So I bought one of those things and proceeded to put one of my few un mending and unbreaking books onto my original shield. The rest of the night was spent installing 50 more copper blocks and a handful of slabs onto the roof. Day 35, I'm out trying it again to get a mending villager. But around noon, I ended up getting a prot 4 villager, which I'll take, man. I'll take that. I actually got mending, unbreaking, and prop 4 all in the same day. So you know I made some books. I put that on my diamond helmet after I grindstoned it. Then I traded some sticks for emeralds and made a power 3 bow. Day 36, I'm gathering up some obsidian, getting prepared to go into the nether. So I fixed up the broken portal and entered at nighttime, hoping that I get a good spawn right next to a fortress. But no such luck, I ended up in the Basalt Deltas, one of the worst places to end up in the Nether. I quickly realized I hate the Nether. Day 37, I'm back in a much more comfortable place than Hell, I'm mining in caves deep below the ground. And I'm looking for copper and I'm looking for iron and coal. And I ended up finding an amethyst geode right next to my house, which is really convenient because I plan on using a lot of tinted glass in builds, and all of these shards were pretty much fully grown, so I went through and harvested all of them and cleaned up all of the non-essential garbage inside of this geode. And I mean it, I did a substantial amount of carving before laddering my way all the way up to the surface. And would you look at that, we are within 50 blocks of my house, so this amethyst geode should pretty much be growing all the time. Day 38, I am improving my financial status so I can buy that shiny pair of pants I've always dreamed of. And then I'm heading back out to the caves far away from my home so that I can start looking for some more iron and copper. Day 39, I mined up some deep slate diamond ore with my silk touch pickaxe, and then easily conquered a zombie spawner and added a couple more saddles to my collection. And I don't really know what day to call this, but it's in between 39 and 40. And I found a skeleton spawner, which is awesome. And it had a chest with a couple more saddles and a couple of golden apples in there. Now it's for sure the next day on day 40, and I just pillared straight out of the skelly spawner and rode home on least resistance. Then I did a little bit of farming and a little bit of breeding to wrap up the night. On day 41, I went up to a fully maxed out weapon smith and bought a few smite 3 and efficiency 3 axes off of him so that I could craft up an efficiency 5 axe. And let me tell you, this is the first time I've used efficiency on a diamond axe in this series, and it was amazing. And with all this wood I was gathering, I knew I'd be able to convert it into sticks and make a mountain of money off of these dumb Fletchers. Day 42, I slapped down eight blast furnaces and started smelting down my massive amounts of iron. Then I had a little bit of a jailbreak and I had to round up some of the villagers. After that, it was out to the copper mines. And day 43 was spent all day down in the copper mines as well, but it was worth it because I got over a stack of copper blocks at the end of it all. Day 44 is a day of smelting copper, selling sticks, and admiring my wealth. Finally got those pants I always dreamed of on day 45, 
grindstoned him and enchanted him with blast protection. Then I went on to put mending on my looting sword and name it the Beef Eater. Then I crafted over two stacks of copper blocks and spent the night installing them onto my roof. It took me all the way till the afternoon the next day to put all those blocks down, but then I hit up the caves to finally get enough copper to finish my roof. I hope. And I also found some diamonds. Day 47, I pillared out from the caves and was right next to my house. And from this angle, the roof even looks finished. But it's not finished, so I need to smelt more copper. Then I finally purchased my chest plate to complete my full set of diamond armor. Day 48 is another half stack of copper blocks down the drain. Then I grabbed my trusty steed and was about to head out to a beach to desecrate. But before I left, I had to do some breeding with the heifers and then exercise some population control. At about noon, I leashed up least resistance and destroyed the local beach. And upon returning home, I noticed that this guy is now a nitwit. Wasn't he a Fletcher before? Then I finished out my day by crafting all of that sand I mined into some tinted glass. Day 49, I'm installing those tinted glass vanity windows and mining for the remainder of my roof the rest of the day and night. I'm slaving in front of a hot stove on day 50. Then I added mending to my puddle cruisers, crafted up some scaffolding, and finally finished my extremely expensive roof. Day 51 was spent counting my wealth and deforesting for even more money. Day 52 was a peaceful day of farming wheat and carrots, as well as some OP book production. I wanted to make some good armor, but to do this I would need more sticks for XP. So I went back to lumberjacking and slinging them sticks all night. I'm currently a successful stick entrepreneur, but I'm not too good to take out the garbage. Then I chopped down some more trees and tried to get some of that phantom membrane. Through just a little more stick selling on day 55, I was actually able to craft up my dream armor. I don't have aqua affinity or respiration yet, but that will come at some point. Then I took least resistance out for a continental expedition. It took some effort, but we journeyed. Mostly by boat across the ocean. I got distracted at a sunken ship, but I received a treasure map from the chest. I then proceeded to spend all night and all day of day 56 desecrating the land before discovering a neat trick that allowed me to dig straight down to the treasure. I noticed that centering perfectly over the X on the treasure map allowed me to dig straight down into the treasure, and I obtained my very first Heart of the Sea. Bright and early on day 57, I am going to hell. The reason being is that I would like to find a spot in the nether that I can travel that's not over a lava lake. But after exploring for a few minutes, I dismantled my portal because this ain't the place and went traveling far off in the distance and made a new portal. Sadly, this portal connected with the portal I had just made, so I spent the rest of the day running back all the way to my horse. I met up with LR in the middle of the night, we went a few hundred more blocks away before building another portal. Traveling through, I saw lava and was immediately engulfed, but my boots had fire prod, so I didn't even panic that much. And all my pain was erased when I saw that I was right in front of a nether fortress. Day 58, I'm destroying places. Then I headed to the warp forest for some resources. And for some reason, I built a portal and traveled home, even though I was a thousand blocks away from my house with no boat over an ocean. Took some time, but I got distracted by a little bit of a sunken ship, grabbed a treasure map, then I headed home and was in an urgent situation that needed wheat immediately. I found a naturally spawned pink sheep that I had to make mine. I made a name tag for good old least resistance and pinky, and then as I was leaving, an armorer swiped my name tag. I didn't even know you could do that. I then name tag Pinky and the Steed, and actually found a cat that looks like my cat in real life. Named her Cloud and tried to tame her but she was having none of it. Day 61. Give me that pussy. Then I got paid all night long. It was a great day. Day 62, I took least resistance to the beach and searched for Moss once again. And I found two on my first ship. I spent the rest of the night seeking out fuel for my explosives. Day 63, I'm back home so I can breed the cows and figure out how to work the moss. By the beginning of my first completed stack of days, I think I finally have the hang of moss blocks. Then I made an obscene amount of money and re-upped on that good wood. 
started wall construction day 65 and that continued well into day 66 until I needed more cobble so I went to a slime chunk and started mining it out deep underground. I finally finished my initial wall on day 67 and it's gonna stay cobble for a while. Then I'm deforesting all the trees off of my property and trying to collect them brains and pearls at night. Finally added mending to the bee feeder on day 68. Then I continued deforestation and tried to hunt some more phantoms down. Day 69 was filled with fornication, and the party at my place must have been off the chain, because the next day, everybody had a disease. I just ran into the house and started spamming party favors in an effort to keep them to stick around. I made it out alive, but then I am swiftly ignoring this problem because I am in desperate need of a vacation. And nothing is more relaxing than a cross-country journey with my trusty steed. We traveled on the open ocean all day on day 70 into day 71. And then I tied up to least resistance outside of our fortress nether portal because this vacation has an actual purpose. Coming through the nether portal, I was engulfed in lava, but I knew that this was going to happen, so I had fire res on the hotbar. I got really lucky on all of my wither skeleton spawns, and I was able to get a total of three wither skeleton skulls in under 15 minutes, which is just insane. And I only almost died once. But that is enough for me, so I am out of here. I surfaced from the underworld at the end of day 71, and I grabbed my whip and went over to the nearby town so that I could kick some chump out of his bed to sleep for the night. It took me all of day 72 to get back into my land, and then on the morning of day 73, I tied up my horse and returned home for some company-wide layoffs. Congratulations, you two. You're the sole survivors of this company, and I really hope one of you still sells mending. One of these guys turned out to be a dud, but the other guy happened to be my Prop 4 guy, and he had some sweet deals, so I capitalized. Well, it really sucks that I've managed to axe murder two mending librarians in these 74 days, but here we are constructing my new project. No, it's not going to be a dirt ring on the floor. It is going to be something much greater. But I can't tell you what it is. I'm just going to start building on it for a while. And build on it all day and night I did. Day 75, I got on Least Resistance and gave him his very first set of iron armor, which I am convinced is cursed. Don't get me wrong, it started out great. I still have Least Resistance, he's just far away so he doesn't get shot. We cleaned out some of the neighborhood gangsters, and then we were taking a lovely stroll through the jungle. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***. We fell fast down into a lava spout, and I just hopped off. I dismounted, I did everything I could, but I had to watch as the least resistance burned in front of my eyes. Why? The developers hate me. They should have taken me instead. I even still have his armor. I spent the rest of the night trying to fill that void in myself, but it just didn't work. Day 76, I deserve to be in hell after letting my horse die. But I am in there with a purpose as well. I'm making a way to get down to ancient debris level so I can start using the little TNT I have to start mining for ancient debris. I have found that for max efficiency, you lay them out with four blocks in between each TNT. And then when you set them off, it should have a pretty decent chain reaction, and it helps you find a ton of ancient debris without any fire like a bed. When I mined my first piece of ancient debris, I doubled back to the portal and headed over to my house to hang that baby up. I was proud. Then I came immediately back to the nether on the same day and used off the rest of my TNT resources, trying to find some more. And I got a total of eight more. At some point, it turned to day 77, and I'm here smelting up my ancient debris. I had enough for two ingots, which I used to upgrade my pickaxe and my sword. I think most of us probably would. Day 78 was spent trying to get a new steed. But this little fella didn't pass the test. He was too slow. I did find a gray one, though, that, uh, he's acceptable for now. I got some genetic tests to run on him. Final thing I did was make speed potions that day, and then day 79, it's onto my genetic testing. I splash him with the speed potion, and then I try to breed him. I'm gonna try and actually make an accelerated mule here. And we have a baby born, and I shall grow you up right away. Super duper expensive, and I think I fed him like three extra apples, but it's whatever. Wasted most of my remaining apples because I didn't realize you had to tame them to breed them, and then I built the rest of the night.
And I'm digging this vibe with the Blackstone a lot more than I was the Deep Slate on day 80. Then I installed some dark oak trim around the inside flooring and put some ridiculous enchantments on my hoe that I bought from a villager that is no longer living. Day 81, I took Packer, my new mule, to the local beach so that I could exterminate a population of squid. And I returned home the next night a very rich man in the ink and sand department. And I used that newfound wealth to make some concrete powder and I'm installing it for a floor design. Anger management and then fixing my floor the rest of the day because I am terrible at this game. I retried about three different times. I'm confident the design is right this time on day 85, so I'm setting it in stone. And check it out. We've got a fully finished yin-yang. This will be where the breeding takes place, so I'm putting some beds down, and then day 86, I'm in the nether trying to get some more ancient debris. And would you look at that, right there I already found a piece. Found nine of them in total, so on day 87, I smelted eight of them, and then I hunted mobs the rest of the night trying to get that gunpowder. On day 88, I'm placing nether gold, and then I'm breaking nether gold, so that I I could craft a couple more netherite ingots and upgrade my chest plate and my boots as they deserve to be. And I even made a very small nether wart farm. Day 89 started with making a power 5 bow. That'll come in handy later. Then I went down to the nether with 14 TNT in hopes for finding ancient debris. There was a lot of explosions but I only found a total of 2 ancient debris. Not very satisfying. Then the rest of the night was spamming bone meal on these flowers for light gray dye. That way I could get some light gray glass for this ceiling. But as you can see, I was kind of struggling with some phantoms. Day 90, Packer and I went to the beach. And it was a pretty cool day because I spent the day digging in a random spot by the spawn locations. And I accidentally unearthed a buried treasure. The loot absolutely sucked. Then we had tons of fun because on the way home I rode right into a ravine. We landed in water, but it took me the rest of the night pillaring Packer out of this place. In day 91, I'm out in the nether, strip mining for ancient debris and using my pathetic amount of TNT to find a little bit more. Coming out of the nether on day 92, I had enough ancient debris to upgrade my netherite helmet by lunchtime. Then I spent a little bit of time preparing an end box to go and fight the ender dragon. And that is what Packer and I set out to do. We are on our way for the stronghold across the ocean. And the stronghold was located in an abandoned desert village so I dug straight down to that. I entered and quickly found the library where I began to strip it of all of its resources, mostly the bookshelves. I wanted tons of these things because I think I can break them down and sell them later. Took all the way till nighttime on day 93 to find the portal room, but finally I was ready to add in the Eyes of Ender and get going to fight the Ender Dragon. There was a lot of anxiety here because I do not have a pumpkin. I'm doing this like a man. I spawned in, grabbed my pearls, and went to the main island right away so that I could begin stealing Dragon's Breath that was shot at me and destroying the end crystals with my bow. I know that I'm not the absolute greatest with a bow. I miss, I miss quite often, but you know, I think these ones that are in the cages are just absolutely undestroyable with a bow on Bedrock Edition. So I carefully broke these with a pickaxe with my slow falling potions activated so I could glide safely down. Once she had no crystals, she was defenseless. Nothing could be done to stop her death. And then I collected all that experience and was in an awkward camera mode, so I accidentally walked in the portal. Well, that kind of stinks, but at least we killed the Ender Dragon. So returning home, I used the rest of my nighttime to get a cow down into my mine shaft. I had never done this before, and it was actually extremely satisfying. I promise I'll be back in less than a week. Day 95 started with looking at the only two things I've really built in this world. And this building's purpose is still staying a secret. Then I enchanted a couple of books and proceeded to break down tons of bookshelves from that library. And that is simply because knowledge is power, but money is poggers. Day 96, I installed some glass and then went over to my end portal on Packer. Day 97, I arrived at my stronghold and dug straight down to the portal, because we do have coordinates on dirty bedrock. Then I fashioned a really quick safety structure around this little portal here. Finding an end city was super easy, because I built up really high and then cranked it up to 72 chunks like we can on bedrock, and saw one right away. I even used my spyglass to spot the end ship. Needless to say, getting to the end city was easy peasy because I could see exactly where it was and these shulkers appear to be doubles.
The loot of the city was decent. I got some diamond horse armor and a couple of pieces of diamond armor that I didn't really need. But the two things I was mainly searching for here were shulker shells and the end ship for the elytra. Getting the dragon head, I dropped it down below to the end island, but I'll go back for it later. Instead, I went over and killed the double shulker guardian to get the elytra. And the pickaxes in the chest weren't bad either. The perfect fortune pickaxe was really impressive. Day 98, I pillared up really, really high and then flew home with my elytra on. But in hindsight, I probably should have brought Packer along on a lead. Day 99 must have been my lucky day because I came with seven TNT and hopes to find a single piece of ancient debris. And on the fifth explosion, I actually found one. Then it was on to upgrade my pants and get a well-deserved set of netherite armor. Then I named my flak jacket and my pants. And I put Unbreaking 3 on my jetpack because I was out of mending books. And I set up some of my treasures, like the first diamond, the first god apple, ancient debris, my first record, the jetpack, and least resistance's armor. Rest in peace. Finally, I have my three wither skeleton skulls and the dragon. He okay. All right, enough f***ing around. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna fight the wither down deep below. Building the soul sand tea and placing the first two heads was honestly super intimidating because it got real, really fast. I've never fought the Wither underground, but the first part is with the bow, as always. But in Bedrock Edition, the Wither is notoriously, notoriously difficult, and he definitely proved to be quite destructive here. Look at all the blocks he takes out. I was able to get him down into the sword mode with my bow, but did I mention that once he gets there, he spawns in up to four Wither skeletons to protect him. I was able to drink some milk and drink a healing potion as well, and I decided I'd go back out for some more action. It was immediately proven that I should not have gone out for more action. I ate a golden apple and started sprinting for my life, but there was wither skeletons all around me, and the wither was chasing me, and I knew it. I had to grab my milk as fast as I could, but I had total clutter of an inventory. Taking out the wither skeletons, I kept circling around the pillar to avoid the wither, and was able to heal myself up before encountering him once again. I was using my smite 5 axe to just whack him down the most that I could the entire time. But man, this was definitely the hardest fight I have ever been in in my life. Using a cowardly strat that almost always works, I panicked and ran whenever my health was low and got some milk from my cow whenever I needed it. But then it was time to slay him once and for all. And I went out at it and I thought it was going to be the run, but I had to retreat. Once I regen some health, I went back out to finish the job because I needed that nether star for a beacon. And I ran away once I actually killed him and I was so excited. I drank some milk to celebrate and to remove the wither effect. And I had to act fast because I realized that the wither was barely over lava and I needed to save the nether star. My inventory was full, but I saved it just in time before it burned in lava. I thanked my cow and headed back up to the surface to add my first nether star up to the trophy collection. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything that I was able to accomplish in 100 days of Hardcore Bedrock Edition.